Hello, my name is Phoebe Legere. Welcome to Roulette TV. Tonight, our guest is Chris Cutler, composer, drummer, artist, and culture critic extraordinaire. Cutler was a member of the legendary English band Henry Cow. He's made brave and brilliant recordings with Robert Wyatt, The Art Bears, The Nudes, Per Ubu, Fred Frith, Peter Blegvad, and many others. These CDs are available on Cutler's influential independent label, RER, Recommended. Roulette TV is honored to present rock legend, Chris Cutler.
I loved that performance. Was that improvised music? Way in as much <laughs> as I had no idea what I was going to do before I did it, or what I was doing while I was doing it, it was improvised. Do you have any structure in mind no. before you begin? No, I have a, I have a blank mind before I begin. How did you become such a purist? It seems that in Henry Cow, uh, I'm, I'm just guessing, I don't know, but it seems like you had some type of head arrangement and then you all improvised on that. Were you improvising on changes in Henry Cow or what? No, Henry Cow was a kind of dream band, really, for me. And also, it was my education. It was all of our educations because we really, and we're talking 1971 here, we really covered the ground between completely through composed music, every note written down on paper, learned, complicated, difficult stuff, to completely improvised, no plan, no nothing music with the various stages between also covered, things which were partly composed with big open spaces where things could be changed from night to night. So it was like a laboratory, Henry Cow. You wrote that notation is the medium of the industrialization of music. Um, because I think what's critical about music that's mediated by biological memory is that the function of composition and performance are in, it's indistinguishable. Com composition and performance are the same thing. These functions are divided by notation. You get a specialist class of people who are composers who write the things down for another specialized class of people who are performers who reproduce what the composers have written down. And as notation over four or five hundred years evolves, musicians have less and less and less to do. You know, Haydn didn't bother to write all the bass parts down because the bass parts could be worked out perfectly well by the bass players when they knew what the structure was, a bit like jazz. But this all disappeared. Everything got more and more written down. And that, until you get to the point where you have a whole class of highly trained musicians who can be triggered by notes, very complicated notes, to play very precisely what's written down. But the minute you ask them to do anything for themselves, they have no idea. You know, in an age where recording, which is a third memory system, you know, you've got your biological memory, you've got your written memory, and you've got recordings. Recordings are not a memory like written memory of instructions. Recording is a memory of performances. So suddenly it's possible to compose with performances. This is a whole new idea. But the problem with recordings is they contradict this essential quality of sound. That it's that it evanescent disappears. and transitory. Exactly. Like you know, you want blossom. it to go away and it's hanging around forever and haunting you. <laughs> it's as if the dead are rising up and <laughs> hanging around. Gosh. Uh, let's uh, talk about your equipment and your creative process. You were playing with some flowers. Uh, and I found it so moving. They had a great sound. Well, it was brilliant. And they seem to be have bits of marabou wrapped around them. And uh, you have a, had a toothbrush, and you had a, some kind of a singing bowl. And uh, tell us, uh, tell us, how do you gather this stuff? And what's it all about? Electricity is a great thing, you know. And and the emancipation of sound from the early in the 19th century onwards seems to me to be you know, the, 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 the most significant aspect of music, of, of what happened to music and where it could possibly go or 
whether it's music anymore, I don't really know. But you know, the idea of of the expansion of possibilities of different kinds of sounds and their use in a communicative context, this appealed to me. And electrification has a big part to play 